Hello everybody. I hope oh. Hi everyone. So, how are you tonight? Um so did you know that it's not simply a lack of willpower that causes you to overeat? This is good news because a lot of us beat ourselves up for not being able to say no to treats and and uh you know, food second ha second helpings at dinner. And we often kick ourselves saying, oh, mm, if only I was stronger, or, you know, whatever. But actually, uh, there's a number of factors going on in your insurance, inside your beautiful body that are making it sometimes near impossible to say no to food that you're craving. So a couple weeks ago, I talked about the hormones glucagon and insulin. And uh, today I'm introducing you to a couple more hormones and they're even stronger than those other two. Um, so in this live, by the end of this live, you will know all about the hunger hormones, leptin and ghrelin. So, and you'll see how difficult they make it to say no to food that you love and crave. And I'm also going to give you some tips on how to control them. But first, for those of you who don't already know, I'm Lisa and I'm a certified nutritional practitioner um, and I'm also a certified personal trainer. Uh, who's, and I've worked with hundreds of clients over the years, teaching them about their bodies, how body systems work, and, um, how, and giving them the knowledge it takes to help them make those healthy choices sustainable for themselves. Um, and um, I work with Daria and together we've created a number of transforming relationships with food courses uh, specifically geared towards women who are stuck in self-sabotaging weight loss paradigms and uh, we help them transform their relationship with food and with themselves so that you never have to worry about dieting again. Um, our workshops and courses help you change your eating habits for better health with minimal guilt, um, actually fairly minimal effort, uh, with little shame, no shame actually, no self deprivation and no loss. We want, we, we help you make better choices because you finally agree that you deserve to be healthy and feel good every day. So healthy choices we believe are the first step for making you feel good and making you feel all powerful so in these lives that we're doing we're, we do our best to share insights that can help you move towards this place and shift your perspective about yourself and your bodies to a more compassionate one so thanks for joining so comment live if you're watching right now or if you're watching the replay comment replay and let's get started with our friendly hormones le leptin and ghrelin so let's start with uh, ghrelin so ghrelin has a funny spelling um, and ghrelin is a hormone that helps indicate that you are hungry so what's everyone's most obvious indication of hunger probably most of you will say tummy grumbling hunger pangs so those are kind of the most obvious one, but there's others, you know, headaches and just tiredness or, you know, a weak feeling. But um, what's important to get out of that is hunger is a complex sensation and it's really only indirectly linked to the actual need for food. So that's the interesting part. <laughs> so people are wired to feel they need food, they need to eat whenever food is present and available. So when you see food, your body is wired to tell you that you need that in your mouth. Um, and you can trigger hunger with all five senses and even just imagination. So you might find yourself starving after watching a video of others eating delicious food, um, even though you've just eaten and you're not actually that hungry. Or the mere mention of your favorite soup can get your stomach growling, even if even if you're not hungry. Once again, I remember thinking and dreaming when I was traveling uh, for quite a few years. I was away from British Columbia and Canada, 
and uh, I would think about Pagliacci soup and my tummy would start rumbling um, because that was one of the things I missed the most about being in Canada was going for pag soup um, and focaccia bread. <laughs> um, so actually the entire digestive process centers around the five senses. So our salivary glands are activated when we see, smell, or hear food cooking. Um, and the saliva is so necessary to get started. It's, it's wired that way so that it gets started so that it can help digest the digestive process. So, so saliva actually carries with it enzymes to break down some of the foods and it also is integral for breaking down the food in your mouth, making it easier for your stomach to digest later. Um, in addition, your circadian rhythm, which is your body's timing system, also releases hormones to indicate hunger at your routine eating times. So this prepares your body for digestion. It helps your body calm down and get ready for the digestive process. It's a complicated process. Your body has to go through a lot of work to digest the food that you're giving it. Um, so you'll feel hungry at lunchtime whether you need to eat or not. So that's why it's really good to keep those routines and not go off too much because it really screws up all the systems. Um, also, one thing to add to that is if you're really um, used to snacking late at night, your body is going to trigger a hunger sensation at that time. Um, so that is kind of one of the downfalls when you change your eating habits is your body's still expecting that, um, that food. So it makes it a little bit more difficult, well a lot more difficult to change that habit. But stick with the habit and um, stick with the change and it will become the habit and your body won't do that to you anymore. So um, let's talk about ghrelin, get back into it. Uh, so after your stomach's been empty for a couple of hours, it begins contracting, kind of like a washing machine. Um, it's called peristalsis, and it's it's to help sweep the remaining food into the intestines. So it goes raw, 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 raw. And the rumbling that it makes has a funny sound, like a character in the Lord of the Rings or an action. In, it's called a uh, borborygmus. I wrote it out here for you. Bor, bor, borborygmus. <laughs> Um, and as the stomach empties, the cells in the stomach and intestine produce ghrelin, the hormone ghrelin that we were talking about. And um, that hormone is what produces the borborygmus, and then the, the borborygmus causes the intense, like, growling pangs of hunger. So um, think of borborygmus as like a troll from the Lord of the Rings coming into your stomach, because it kind of is. Give me food! Um, so, if you don't eat at this point, you're going to start, your body's going to react. So, you're going to start feeling weak, and then if you stay like this for any length of time, you might also end up hangry. So, hangry is hungry and angry. And um, I, know, uh, I know my husband gets that way. <laughs> it's pretty funny. He's the most kindest, best-natured man on the planet. But if we don't feed him, uh, not so much. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's still lovely. He's just grumpy um, when he's hungry, hangry. As you run out of, so this happens when you run out of glycogen, which is the body's main fuel. And glycogen comes, of course, from glucose. Uh, and it stores in the liver. So, you know, your liver will release glycogen. But once that's up, then you're really going to get in trouble because that's when, you know, the all the hormones come out to play. <laughs> so glucagon um, and also ghrelin. So hunger like this increases your impulsiveness and reduces your ability to make long-term decisions. So when you are that hungry, you're not going to be eating well. <laughs> Just remember that. Uh, even the most regimented eaters, um, I, I pride myself on being a pretty good eater, um, and I have no willpower when I get to that point. I will, I will eat whatever's there, even if it hurts me. <laughs> so uh, you might have gone grocery shopping in this state. 
Uh, so, <laughs> you know, when you go grocery shopping and you're trying to stick to a budget and you're really hungry and you end up throwing those extra things into your cart, well, that you can blame that on ghrelin and borborygmus. Um, so, the hor that hormone ghrelin is why you shouldn't shop on an empty stomach and why you might make it make poor food choices and even end up binging um, or overeating. Um, Sorry, my, uh, I hope that uh, close unused applications. I don't know what it's talking about. Um, my computer is acting up. Sorry, guys. It's miss. Um, okay, so um, how do you stop Graylin from activating? Well, for one, try to stick to a schedule, so a regular schedule and have your food ready for those times um, and you'll you won't ever have ghrelin because you'll be giving your body what it needs before it needs it um, and the other thing is keep some healthy snacks so if you if you can't make your schedule timing so in your car like have some snacks in the car healthy ones usually nuts are really good like um, fried fruit fried fried fruit <laughs> dried fruit and nuts are a really good choice um, they will keep you satiated for a while uh, and they're not going to spike your blood sugar. Um, so have some of that in your car or a piece of fruit, um, an apple, orange, a grape, something in your car. Um, energy bars, I, I wouldn't go for like protein bars at this point, but just like, you know, a nut bar. Um, kind bars are good. Uh, things like that. Have them available. Um, in your purse, in your car, always have them available so that when you do miss that meal that you're regularly eating, because you've got yourself on a good schedule, um, you've got something to satiate so that you don't go into like starvation mode. Um, and also stop eating at 6 or 7 p.m. at night. Just stop the snacking at night. Uh, allow your body to fast because when it knows that it's fasting and it will get fed again, um, it, it calms down with these responses. So if you fast from say 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. till 7 a.m., 12 to 14 hours is a good good length of time to fast. Um, and a lot of good things happen during that fasting time. A lot of repairs are made. Um, I will get into that in another live. But uh, you know, it is good to stop eating for a few hours a day, at least 12 to 14 actually. So let's go into leptin, the other hormone. Now, scientists have been trying to make synthetic leptin for over a decade because leptin tells you you're full. So that would make a lot of money. Um, but the catch is, uh, like insulin, uh, you can become leptin resistant. So it's actually not beneficial to take it. Um, so if you've heard of insulin resistance, this is type 2 diabetes. Um, so it's when insulin is no longer working in your body. You can produce it, but it doesn't bind and it does nothing. Um, so leptin is similar. So um, I, I, one explanation I use, now this is not a scientific one. There's a much more detailed scientific explanation to, to explain the process. But I want you to think of hormones as being carried on little cholesterol boats through the blood and each one has to have a spot to land or it won't work. So it needs a dock. So if your hormones don't have that dock, they don't work. Um, and they'll just circulate in the bloodstream doing absolutely nothing. Um, and so if you've got too many boats in the water because you've created these stress signals, then you're, you're hormones have no way of transferring the messages to the rest of the body. So, uh, for example, with um, cortisol, cortisol is like the bully boat. Um, the cortisol will dock anywhere so that it can help you survive. So it will block leptin, it will block, block ghrelin, it will block insulin. Insulin is a really big one that it likes to block. And that's why we get disease. Um, so when we get too much stress, that's one of the reasons why we get so sick is because cortisol stops the hormones from doing their functions and telling, spreading the messages for our bodies to do other systems. So um, we 
don't want to get to a point where we need to be told we're full. <laughs> so um, if, you, if you're constantly stressing out your leptin and overeating, then um, you know, you're going to end up uh, leptin resistant. And stress is another reason why you become less leptin resistant. And uh, overeating and not enough sleep is another reason why you become leptin resistant. Now, if you don't have enough leptin, you overeat all the time and you never really fix that. So you just become an overeater. Um, uh, and if you eat processed food as well, that can um, process junk food, that can also create leptin resistance. So in other words, you're on the blood sugar roller coaster when you end up having too much ghrelin, um, like once again, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago, so do go revisit that live if, if you are interested in hearing about the other two hormones. So if you're never full, you're going to keep eating until you almost pop. And, and, and I've done that. I have because I've felt myself become leptin resistant where I just never feel full. Um, and my, my hormones are demanding I eat. Like they're just making it so I have to eat. And it's, it's a horrible cycle to get on. Um, so think of the ways that we can fix it. Eat on regular schedules, lots of fiber, and have snacks available when you do feel panicky hungry. When you start getting hangry, have snacks available before that sets in so you don't get the hormones involved. Um, so to sum it up, I'll stop now, um, but to sum it up, what we learned today, when you don't eat when your body is expecting food or you allow your stomach to get completely empty now not including the fasting time we'll talk about that in another one but um, you want to get your tummy completely empty overnight but trust me you're not gonna gurgle overnight it's that's when you're meant to be empty um, but if you let yourself get completely empty in the day when it's expecting food that's when ghrelin is going to be activated and the borborygmus um, so nutritious snacks, fiber, and also in order to allow leptin to do its job and tell you you're full, you have to get enough sleep, you have to eat whole foods, not junk food, and smaller portions, don't overeat. So treating your body properly when it comes to eating and digestion can make achieving your health goals so, so much easier because you're not bringing in hormones to the party. Um, so if you enjoy um, learning about these lives and you want to learn more tricks about making health goals achievable quickly and easily and having a fun time with us doing it, um, please think about taking one of our courses. The link is in our bio and we suggest you start by taking the three-part Facing the Bully in Your Mind self-paced workshop. It's only $27, $27 and or you can book a free 15 minute consult with either of us to explore the unique issues that you're facing. So I hope you got something out of today's live and I look forward to hearing from you. Night.